Smile for the camera, Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> He's always got to mimic everything I do. <laughs> grabbed a handful of little twigs and that ought to be enough to cook my supper tonight that's pretty amazing isn't it a little birch bark a few twigs it's all it takes you know it's best to have a separate set of cookware for your rocket stove your pans will get a lot of soot on them from the open flame like this it just blows my mind how good these stoves cook. Yeah, this is the little four inch model. You gotta have that cooked in no time, just with a little handful of twigs here. Then the fire will go right out, the stove will go cold, and I can put it away. Yeah, man, there's like no need for real firewood. It's just junk off of dead branch that fell down. <laughs> the supper's all cooked and I still have a few twigs left. <laughs> hey, when I was showing that video where I was cooking the meatloaf and the cornbread, some folks had saw the pot holders on the deck and said that they had made them just like that when they were a kid. Well, these little pot holders here, these were made by two little girls in uh, Georgia. Uh, a little girl named Carol Ann, I believe, and Ladessa. And I hope I got that right. I'm really lousy on names. But hopefully I got your names right. Anyway, they sent up these little pot holders that they made for the cabin and some treats for Frankie. And I love these things. Uh, whenever somebody makes me something for the cabin, it means a lot to me. And I treasure them. And I have a lot of uh, items around the cabin that folks have sent up. And when I look around and I see stuff that my viewers have sent up and now it's part of the cabin, it just means a lot to me, you know. So I really like the pot holders. Uh, I had some other pot holders sent up maybe a year ago, um, some nice big ones that I use all the time. But these little ones are just right when I'm using my uh, waffle iron. When I'm lifting up the bale handle, I need to use a pot holder, but it has to be a little one. And these are just perfect for them. So I want to thank you girls for the time that you invested making the pot holders. And I want to thank everybody else that sends stuff up. And Julie, uh, I'm still loving that blanket you made for me. I love that thing. So I want to thank you all. And uh, I'm just going to be chowing down on some steak and cheese here in a minute. So anyway, thanks again. You know, that fire is just going to go out now. And within a little while, I'll just be able to scoop all that ash right out of there into the fire pit. That stove will cool down and I'll put it away. I didn't have to build a big fire, wait till it burned down the coals, go out and gather a bunch of fire with nothing. I had a little handful of twigs. It's just a, just amazing. I, I can't say enough good things about this little project. I'm sitting here uh, enjoying the day reading some of my old journals and I came across something kind of comical I'll share with you all. Uh, this was on April 16th, 1995. Um, and I mentioned my friend Opie. Well, Opie wasn't his real name. His name was Al. And his friends nicknamed him Opie when he was a little kid. And it stuck with him throughout his life because his ears stuck out and he looked like little Opie on the uh, Andy Griffin show. So anyway, um, it says, funny thing happened the other day. Opie and Patty came up to visit me, which was a shock in itself. But ironically, Opie was the best man at my wedding and was the one who signed my marriage license. And just by chance, I received my divorce stipulations while he was here. 
and I needed a witness to sign them while I signed them. And so here he was to sign it. He signed my marriage license, and he signed my divorce papers. He signed me in and signed me out and completed the circle. <laughs> I can remember that day to a T, man. We laughed about that all day. <laughs> I can't say that I'm very fond of the color blue. I like blue jeans. Well, yes, sir. And I like blue skies. I even like these blue gloves. Uh, we'll just have a look in there. Well, except for when I hear a doctor say that. I've disliked this blue canoe since the day I acquired it. And this color change is long overdue. I picked up $12 worth of rattle cans and started spraying. But I think my audience had his doubts about how it was going to come out. A mixture of colors in a series of vertical lines, and I think she'll blend into the marsh grass pretty good now. A heck of a lot better than that blue, that's for sure. All in all, I think she's looking pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye, Blue Canoe. <laughs> Quite a few people had asked about how the garden fared while I was away. I'll give you a little update on that. The beets here are doing great. Wow. These are just about ready to pick some of these beet greens. I just go in and I, I randomly pick through and I just keep doing it. I pick all the larger ones, all the larger leaves, and I get quite a few and then it just keeps sprouting leaves. And I have in the past come in here with a pair of scissors and cut all the leaves right off and it'll still continue to grow back up with some nice fresh greens. And these are about the, the age that I like to pick them. They're really, really tender. And they're just awesome with butter and salt. Oh, I love them. The cukes over here, these haven't really done much of anything. Uh, they've grown a little bit, but not a heck of a lot. The tomatoes got hit pretty hard. The night after I left, uh, the temp dropped down to 27. And then there was a couple of really cold nights too uh, in the mid 30s. So um, the tomatoes didn't do so good. These are the butternuts here. They're doing okay. These here, these zooks down here are doing really nice. These are doing really, really good. See, this is just a low area with a bunch of crap. And I just threw in a barrel here because I had some of the extra seed, and those are doing really good. The zucchinis that were under here all died. Um, I had some little butternuts in the seed trays that had been neglected, and I just threw them here for now. Although a couple of the zucchinis are popping back up. See? That one there and that one there. Now the beans and the peppers are doing great. Now the beans and the peppers are doing really good. Really, really good. Uh, the beans are ready to flower here. Some nice plants going on. And even the peppers, you know, a little flowers going. So I'm happy with those. Yeah, those are doing really well. But again, the beans are doing really, really nice. Really nice. Always do really, really good with the beans under the hoops. I start them early. We have a good early harvest, and we just harvest them all summer long. They're just fantastic. The broccolis are starting to perk up here, too. The little broccoli plants here, they're looking nice and healthy. Now these beans here are coming into it as well. The little pepper plants, they didn't do well. So I'm just kind of forgetting about those. Now this is where I had some of the peppers that died. I had a few little pumpkin plants that I had started. And I just threw those in yesterday. I'll show you. You just, with this little piece of plantains growing up, just scrape away the leaf fodder here. Look at the worm 
worms. Look at the worms in the soil. The soil's nice, moist, really dark, just full of worms. It's beautiful. I'm really liking this uh, leaf mulch method so far. Uh, this is where I cut all that firewood back in the fall. And I had all the bark and sawdust and everything right here in the garden. And then I put all those leaves over the garden back in the spring when I was raking the yard. I wasn't sure how it was going to work out, but it's working out really good. Really good so far. Like I say, you just dig down and the earth is nice and moist and it's just full of worms. Pretty impressive. So, it's not getting overgrown with weeds. And, uh... For leaving the garden unattended, it's uh, doing pretty well.